Ocean Forum 2024. I am Taehyung Park from Ocean Slide. So I prepared my presentation in English. 네. Firstly, thank you to the World Ocean Forum organizers, Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries in Busan Metropolitan City, and Busan Daily News for the opportunity for me to speak at this special session on our Ocean Conference. My name is Taehyun Park. I'm the East Asia Regional Manager for Oceans 5. It's unfortunate that I can't be there in person today, but I'm grateful to be able to join online. Oceans 5 is a global funders collaborative dedicated to ocean conservation. It's arguably the largest marine philanthropic organization. Our core program is grant making to other NGOs to support their work at national, regional and global levels geared towards tackling the critical issues that our oceans face, including sustainable fishing, marine protected areas and climate change. So why is ocean action important? I'm sure that our audience is familiar with the importance of our ocean activities, as well as um, Dr. Cho's previous um, presentation. Our ocean covers 70% of this planet. Its functioning and health is directly related to our economies and well-being. Sustainability of ocean-based activities span across the wide spectrum of industries and activities. In the context of climate emergency, ocean is not only important to buffer climate change impacts through heat absorption and carbon dioxide absorption, but also it is part of the solution. Ocean-based renewables present 10% of um, carbon emissions needed by 2050 to stay under 1.5 degrees Celsius. According to the High Level Panel for Sustainable Economy, offshore wind and other marine renewables present, 50, present 45% excuse me, of emission reduction potential in the ocean. The vast water, body of water that connects the continents have been and still remains the main transport for goods. Today, 80% of world's, world's trade is moved by ships, which also is incidentally is associated with billions of greenhouse gas emissions that is equivalent to Japan's emissions. 40% of the world's population lives in the coastal area where their livelihood, be it fisheries, tourism or port activities, are directly related to the ocean. Fisheries and aquaculture production is ever increasing in demand where it provides vital protein for the world's poorest populations. Estimated 60 million people are engaged in fisheries and aquaculture globally. Sustainable fisheries resources management is not only critical for food security and livelihood for the people that directly rely on them, but also for the balance of the whole ecosystem that provides for the commercial fish species. The list can go on, but I think we can agree that ocean action is critical for sustainability of our planet and therefore our economies. If it was all not enough, then perhaps the fact that ocean is responsible for over half of the oxygen that we breathe may convince you. Unfortunately, the status of our ocean does not look great. Despite the advancements in our technologies and industries, with increased petrochemical industries and widespread use of plastics, since the 1990s, there's been a significant increase at a worsening rate of plastic pollution at sea, you see in the bottom left um, graph. It is estimated that 8 to 12 million tonnes of plastics reach our oceans per year. Ocean pollution is, of course, not only plastics, but also chemical through runoffs, especially in nitrates from agriculture, is building up in the coastal areas, leading to eutrophication, where there is most marine biodiversity richness. Ocean acidification and sea surface temperature is increasing also at unprecedented rate and pace, accelerating due to increasing greenhouse gas emission. Fisheries and aquaculture production continue to grow, reaching a record of 218 million tons in 2021. As you can see, the second graph left bottom, sustainably fish stocks, the blue section, is decreasing, however, over the years, where underfished stocks remaining are less than about 6% only. In the last century, 90% of the big ocean fish have been have been mostly, um, sorry, 90% of the big ocean fish have been mostly um, decreasing and lost. <clears throat> 
And of course, this is all estimated according to recorded catch. Illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing is prevalent in all seas and oceans. It's notoriously difficult to estimate, but annually it is conservatively estimated to be about 10 billion euros in loss. However, these key threats are the reasons for action. Much of our work at Oceans 5 and the Ocean Community Action supports the global targets such as the SDG Goal 14 that um, you heard from Dr. Choi's presentation, as well as the Kunming Montreal Bi Global Biodiversity Framework 23 targets, especially Target 3, or protecting 30% of ocean by 2030, to which the Global High Seas Treaty, increasing fisheries transparency, addressing climate change, a vital part of the solution. Despite the goals, our ocean is continually under increasing and more complex threats and therefore ever requesting more attention and urgent action. To, this, to address these global nature of ocean's threats, our ocean conference was initiated by the US State Department under the leadership of Secretary John Kerry in 2014. Since then, it has been the annual global event that has drawn international attention to the threats facing the ocean and mobilize concrete commitments from the world's governments, private sector and non-governmental organizations. To date, the conferences catalyze more than two and a half million, uh, two and a half thousand, excuse me, voluntary commitments worth nearly 128 billion US dollars. While the focus action areas have been varied according to the host countries across the six broad areas of action that you heard in the previous presentation, tackling climate crisis, advancing sustainable fisheries, combating marine pollution, promoting marine protected areas, fostering sustainable blue economies, and supporting maritime security. Because it is an event with representatives from governments, private sector, and civil society come together, it provides a unique space that brings truly collaborative spirit to tackle ocean threats multisectorally. Since the beginning of our ocean conference, Oceans 5 and our partners have been intimately involved in the conferences, largely in three ways, supporting tools and science to provide fact-based evidence building and management technologies, driving commitments through NGO activity and providing discussion space among stakeholders, and finally supporting the significant undertaking that is hosting the, our Ocean Conference to the host country wherever possible. Oceans 5 continues to be dedicated to the successful Our Ocean Conference session in Busan in April 2025, where there'll be a special seventh thematic of digital oceans that you heard previously. Why is it important, especially since this is the first time that our Ocean Conference is being held in Northeast Asia, as well as celebrating the 10th year of the conference? South Korea is a maritime powerhouse, despite its relatively small maritime area, having a global footprint on ocean industries and in action. It's home to the busiest ports in the world right here in Busan, and is also a leader in shipbuilding and marine engineering. South Korea is also one of the top five distant water fishing flag states, with over 250 um, vessels fishing across 16 different coastal states and eight regional fisheries management areas. Additionally, with over three, th three 37,000 domestic marine fishing vessels. Fishing vessel density per EEZ area is twice as many as China, seven times that of Japan, and 12 times that of Norway. It's also the world's eighth largest greenhouse gas emitter, where just and sustainable energy transition in South Korea, is especially recognizing the role of offshore wind energy is critical to reaching net zero by 2050 globally. Additionally, it is home to globally significant marine ecosystems, rich with commercially relevant fishery species, as well as endangered marine organisms, such as sharks, marine mammals, turtles, among others. Korea is, of course, also a major source and market for the global petrochemical industry. The result of the final negotiation towards a new legally binding agreement on plastic pollution in Busan later this year will be the basis of obligation for targeting and tackling the problem of plastic pollutions globally. 
With the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries of South Korea hosting the upcoming Our Ocean Conference in Busan and framing it around action, it is a great opportunity to showcase South Korea's leadership towards ocean action, especially given the mega year 2025 will be in regards to ocean action. 2025 will be a mega year um, as it'll be kicked off with Our Ocean Conference in Busan and shortly the UN Ocean Conference in Nice will continue the momentum for ocean action and political attention, especially regarding some of the major issues such as the High Seas Treaty. The end of 2025 is also a midpoint for the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Oceans 5 and our partners support both the host country as well as the active engagement from the global community to the conferences through our grant making and global network. I'd like to highlight some of the great ways that NGOs have been collaborating and contributing to the success of our ocean conferences in the past. For example, in terms of tools and science, which may be of particular interest to this audience, making data accessible and transparent for activities that happen on such a vast area of sea is difficult. Therefore, it has been a particular area of successful and critical collaboration between NGOs and governments and other stakeholders to support action through informing them with analysis, assessments, and new tools. This, as you, can, you see on the screen, is SkyTrue 30 by 30 progress tracker, which was launched in Athens, our oceans in April this year. This platform visualizes and helps account for the MPA actions at sea. With the context of Kunming Montreal um, Global Biodiversity Framework's 30 by 30 goal, and still many gaps in MPA progress beyond perhaps MPA Atlas, which is complementary to this tracker, is based on reports areas only. SkyTruth and Bloomberg Philanthropies launched this powerful new tool, an interactive platform designed for the general public to see how well the world is doing to meet the 30 by 30 goal in the ocean. Democratizing data biodiversity is critical, especially because achieving by 30 in quantity and quality requires all hands and minds on deck. Meeting 30 by 30 requires governments to establish robust MPAs. I encourage the audience to visit the site and explore the data, tools, and other resources available. As with any tools and technologies, widespread adoption will ensure its effectiveness. Fisheries activities, transparency and accountability is also an area of action where there has been significant progress with support of NGO collaboration with governments and industries. Global Fishing Watch was launched in 2016 by Google in partnership with two international NGOs, Oceana and SkyTruth. Oceana is an international ocean conservation organization and SkyTruth, the same organization you had previously heard, is a technology firm that uses satellite imagery and data to protect the environment. Leonardo DiCaprio, the actor and ocean advocate, announced it at the Washington Our Ocean Conference that you see on the right here, bringing awareness to the issue and the Global Fishing Watch's website. Global Fishing Watch aims to bring increased transparency of human activities at sea by creating and publicly sharing map visualizations data and analysis tools to enable scientific research and policy towards effective governance of our ocean. It uses commercial and government source data such as AIS, VMS and satellite imagery. Since its launch, Global Fishing Watch has been partnering with governments around the world to share their vessel tracking data, providing technical support and analysis to partner countries to better monitor, survey and control their vessels at sea. Another example is supporting the disclosure of commitments on MPAs made at the Our Ocean Conference. As you heard previously, Our Ocean Conference is about commitments and action. In Athens Our Oceans Conference, Oregon State University released Our Ocean Conference Commitments Assessment Report at their side event. The report evaluates, that, evaluates MPAs and other effective area-based conservation measures announcements made at all conferences is our ocean conferences in order to promote accountability. The evaluation found on the, on the right you can see 72% of MPA and OECM commitments was made since 20 of the OECM commitments made 
was from the our ocean conferences were implemented. However, it also showed that there are still commitments that have not been completed. Their research brought attention to the fact that 40% of globally implemented areas in MPAs came through announcements made at the Our Ocean Conference. This highlights the importance of a global stage commitment to accelerate action on the water and what these announcements lead to actions. Here are some of the noteworthy announcements um, that, may, uh, that were collaborated, collaborated closely with NGOs and governments on MPAs that were committed at the previous Our Ocean Conferences. Of course, all of these came after months, perhaps years of science, stakeholder discussions, and workshops in preparation, a true collaboration that was celebrated on the Our Ocean Conference stage. For example, during the 2017 Malta Our Ocean Conference, on the far left top, EU Commissioner Vela announced the Jakuba Roma pit area in the Adriatic Sea to be the Mediterranean's first MPA. Our grantee MedReact defined the areas needed to be protected in Adriatic Sea, brought stakeholders including fishermen along the journey to successfully achieve the announcement at our oceans. At the recent Our Ocean Conference in Athens, our grantee Blue Ventures, far bottom left, um, worked with African nations to support the announcements of series of commitments, including Ghana's intention to establish its first community-led MPA, Madagascar's creation of a new large MPA around Barren Island, and Guinea-Bissau's ambition to exceed the international target to protect 30% of ocean by 2030. Other noteworthy Our Ocean Conference announcements included in 2014, President Remengasau of Palau, Palau declared that the entire EZ of Palau to be set as MPA aside from traditional fishing activities, setting the course for what ocean conservation and protection and sustainable um, fisheries means. And also in 2016, President Obama announced, established, and announced the establishment of the first marine national monument in the Atlantic off the coast of New England that was covering 12,000, over 12,000 kilometers squared. So there are multiple moving pieces in hosting our ocean conferences. NGOs can help to support their various operations and logistics as well to make the successful event. It could range from hosting side sessions where active panel discussions can take place, getting panelists and representatives logistical support to present at our ocean conference, to be present at our ocean conference, and securing active participation from NGO community. To ensure continuity and operational support is in place to every host from 2025, a new Our Ocean Secretariat is hosted by the World Resources Institute that was launched in Athens. This effort was supported by Bloomberg Philanthropies and Oceans 5 funds and is expected to support capacity building and knowledge building through technical assistance to the host country. Another area NGOs collaborate towards action is through providing resources. For example, the Ocean Resilience Climate Alliance, a funders collaborative aiming to support ocean climate action, announced additional 50 million US dollars in commitments, bringing the alliance's total investment to over 300 million US dollars. This effort will complement government's resources and private actions globally. Finally, apart from the conservation-focused examples I've given today, there are many ex examples and active NGOs across, across the pillars of the Our Ocean Conference that help to shape and accelerate progress towards ocean action since the inception of our ocean conferences. And I hope this presentation has demonstrated some of the ways that NGOs collaborate with key partners through our ocean conference, which is a key international ocean event for the ocean community. Our grantees, both in South Korea and globally, stand ready to collaborate with you to make our ocean conference in Busan a success. Thank you very much for listening.